Okay, so my first test was pretty much a dismal failure. So here's the thought. Maybe I need a longer cable run. And you know what? If I, if I jumble the, the pins to where it can't spin and create that electromagnetic shield, they should interfere with each other without me having to strip all of the cable off and going through all that hassle. So... All right, attempt number two. I'm thinking, I don't know, 20 feet of cable or so should do it. Maybe 30. Let's give it a go. That looks good, yeah? Eh, maybe give it another couple swirls. Ah, there we go. Ooh, good. Chop it off. Sweet. All right, here we go. Strip off the ends. And since I'm not laying these out straight like I did a moment ago, I'm going to purposely go for ones that would never be next to each other. Like they wouldn't be in the same little two strand bundle. So I'm going to go just straight color and straight stripe, like green, orange, blue, brown, green stripe, orange stripe, brown, right? You get the idea. So that way I know that they will have some nasty crosstalk going on between them. <laughs> you know what? You know what I hate? is when people crimp these cables and then don't put it far enough into the tip to where it just has this dangly thing at the end. But I'm gonna purposely do it now just to make it even more annoying. Just for the record, there's my strange miswiring standard. And there we go, got the wires sticking out. Doesn't that just annoy you just to see that? Not making that same mistake again. Crimp. Huh, I've never seen that before. It actually says split on the screen. I wonder what that means, I'm guessing the pairs are split? Would this figure that out? All right, let's see if this cable works. Purple cable of death, meet Synology file transfer. All right, come back over here and let's go ahead and drag that file over and start the file transfer all over again. File transfers up. Uh, speed's looking okay. That's kind of a bummer. And good grief, what is it? take to cause an issue this is way harder than i thought it'd be but i'm too far down the road to stop so truth be told it's a new day i wore the same shirt so you wouldn't know that but um ethernet cable goes 328 feet 100 meters before attenuation occurs now it can actually go longer than that in most cases but i i guarantee you it probably is not going to go a thousand foot uh which is what's in this box without attenuation so um, so my thought is, what if I just add a tip to each end and throw the whole box up there and see what happens? So let me first crimp a tip on here. I'll use the T568B standard because I know it's not going to go a thousand feet or anywhere close if I don't. All right, I got one from each side. Let's run a little cable test over a thousand foot spool. Let's see what we get. Box of giant cable in. And let's get one unplugged into this switch. And one end plugged into this switch. Does a thousand foot or so of cable result in a mostly bad Ethernet connection? I'm trying to see if if I'm even getting a light there. I, I've, I'm I'm not. I'm not getting a light. Ah, a thousand foot is too far. All right, next plan. I'm going medieval on our little Frankenstein cable here. Frankenstein cable reconnected. Jury says, hey, I've got signal. Console cable connected. Let's drag and drop that file. Start a little file transfer going. Man, that looks too good. Pin number one, you are disconnected. Ugh. Oh, ah! Lost the signal. Well, that pretty much did its job. I think I've got one more plan. So I'm going to pinouts.ru because they have this nice little graph that shows which ones are transmit and receive. You can see that pin one, pin two is transmit, pin three and pin six are receive. So here's my theory. If I make another jacked up cable, I'm going to intentionally choose the colors that lines up transmit with receive in the same pair. That is, I'm gonna take pin one, and pair it together to where it literally transmits next to pin three. So I'm gonna make white with green stripe pin one, and I'm gonna make white with orange stripe pin two. <laughs> That's gotta do something, right? All right, so I'm back to this guy. I'm gonna cut the tips off. Gone, gone. Strip the shielding. 
Now, green and orange are the ones that are usually used for transmit and receive, so I'm literally going to take blue and brown and just clip them off. So typically in T568B, orange is your transmit pair, green is your receive. Um, but I'm going to jack that up. I'm going to take orange stripe, that'll be the first pin of transmit. I'm going to make pin number two green stripe on both sides because that'll spin them kind of together as they're, they're communicating. I'm thinking if my brain is working right. Then I'm going to make green and orange solid the other uh, pair, which is going to be uh, pin number three and pin number six, if you're talking about T568B, and kind of tie those together as the receive. And let's just see if, I don't know, that does something. Looks pretty good to me. It's giving me a warning by blinking that a few of the things are missing. Um, oh, by the way, I did look up what split means. It's pretty much this cable tester recognizing I'm not using the right pins. Smart cable tester. All right, dead Franken cable moving out. New Franken cable moving in. I've got nothing, no signal. <laughs>